two days, Graham Nolan's return to Monster Island. Please remember to like, subscribe and comment as we love to hear back from our viewers. Also, if you enjoy our videos, please consider becoming a patron of our show through Patreon and or GoFundMe. Links are listed below the video in the description. From the deepest, darkest recesses of Dangerous Nerds headquarters, Keith Moncrief and Gary Cassell. Another episode of Pop Culture Minefield with Keith and Gary. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a few subjects. As you saw our pre-video that talked about some of the things that we'd be discussing. We're going to be talking about Oscars in the comics, uh, the Frog Sisters on the new Lost Boy series, uh, Constantine and Watchmen, and then some more stuff towards the end of the episode. So let's start off first of all with uh, Keith's opinion on what happened at the Oscars. <laughs> well, uh, the Oscars were this past Sunday, and uh, just like we uh, thought it was uh, <coughs> no host, uh, various people getting a chance to give out the awards. But look, given what this channel is about, Let's just cut straight to the big news. Comics did very, very well this year. Black Panther and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. That's four Academy Awards between them. Okay, now Black Panther won uh, for Best Original Score and also Best Costume for Ruth E. Carter and Best Production Design, which is amazing. And then... Uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse won for uh, uh, Best Animated Film, beating out Incredibles 2, and for me... Ralph wrecks the internet. And that too. Which is funny because if you didn't see the, the photo going around, was that uh, they were advertising at certain stores, I don't know if it was Target or Walmart, mm -hmm. and it had the little sign Oscar winner with wreck it Ralph <laughs> too. I was just like going... That's that's pretty embarrassing right there, my friend. <laughs> a little bit. Oops. But anyway, you were saying. Yes. Uh, comics have done very well. So now between uh, uh, what uh, the uh, Marvel Studios has, Sony has, and Warner Brothers has, that's at least, wow, that's at least, well, I shouldn't say, I, I, we shouldn't count all of the Warner Brothers because some of those are for older films, but of the more recent stuff, uh, with uh, Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight Trilogy, that's a lot of really good Academy Awards won by comics over the last 10 years. So uh, I think uh, we should expect to see more as more and more filmmakers and more studios want to take on comics. And as things are progressing, when you have films... Uh, uh, when you have non-comic book superhero films that actually make it, I think there are going to be a lot more Academy Awards won. So. And, and it opens the doorway to some of those those comic books that are not superhero centric. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, I remember comic book films like uh, Ghost World. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was a really good film. Road to Perdition is a good one. Road to Perdition, another one. Uh, so we're going to see some changes here, changes in attitude. Yeah. So, and that's nice. Uh, I, I will point out that I hate the Oscars. I think that it's just one big um, circle jerk of uh, Hollywood people glorifying each other um, in like order to get more money. Like the Independent Spirit Awards? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I think, and I said this to him before, is that uh, the Oscars, you want to bring people like me back to watching that show because I won't bother watching it. Get the Oscars to be about just the below-the-line people. About stuck, get stuntmen in there. 
Mm-hmm. My God, how stuntmen are not up for Oscars, I'll never know. Yeah. That's ridiculous. And a few actors should be getting an Oscar for that, too, for some of their work. Yes. But we should be focusing on, on the, uh, not the A-list people all the time. It just, it's just about them making more money, and that just bugs me. But I am excited that the comics finally got some recognition. And, but it's still, it's not going to shut up Hollywood critics that uh, love to, to talk down about comic book movies, which, you know, they're pretentious people. What do you want? Yeah. So, um, and of course, um, I, I don't know, how do you feel about uh, Avi Arad's appearance on the Oscars? <laughs> Because how do you feel about Avi Arad? I'm just curious. I have no idea how he feels about Avi Arad. No. You know, it, it, I just found it kind of convenient that uh, when the award for uh, Best Animated Film was handed out, that Avi Arad was able to position himself right there at the Centrally center, in, in the, the back. And even though he, he wasn't allowed to say anything, thank goodness. Uh, I, look, I... I at least have to give it up to everybody that worked on that film. It was a very well done film, but it's not like the dude wrote it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he just helped make it happen. Uh, okay. um, and you know, and we've got a lot of people like that in Hollywood. And that transitions us to another one that uh, I understand that you are a big fan of uh, is um, uh, Donna uh, Donner and her new X Men movie. The trailer dropped yesterday. The new trailer. Yes. And oh my God, I can hardly wait to not watch that movie. <laughs> I'm so excited to avoid seeing it. It <laughs> looks like crap. <laughs> I, I look. I will say this. Um, give it up to Fox for wanting to try this again. Okay. Because um, the first attempt was not good. And when I say not good. I mean, not good on the level of, like, Superman 3, Superman 4, not good. So, (laughs) Uh, you know, it's like, uh, I look at it as this way, from the line from As Good As It Gets with Nicholson, when he he asks the lady, he says, is this just simply the last uh, shot at the boss's whiskey? You know, this is uh, their last X-Men movie before Disney, uh, Marvel take over. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, you know, I'm telling you right now, we know... Kevin Feige will have nothing to do with Donner. Uh, Donner is a very anti-comic book person. She hated the X-Men comics, which is why she's always identified the X-Men films as her vision of what the X-Men were. And she doesn't want to connect it with the comic books. She distances it from the comic books. And I'm sorry, you can't do that and expect the fans to want to go see the movie or be okay with what you're doing, which is why... Uh, Keith in particular, I mean, he just, uh, sometimes I can't get him to shut up about it. He just goes on and on about Donner. <laughs> well, it, it's Schuler it, Donner, isn't it? It, it? Yeah, yeah. It, it, look, this this particular film is being directed by Simon Kinberg, who is the guy that took over from Donner uh, in time enough to give us X-Men First Class, which, again, has, in my opinion, the official distinction of being one-fourth of a good movie. But uh, I'm hoping that, I mean, I'm not really trying to uh, hope that this movie fails myself personally. I would like to see a good movie. It's just that given everything that's happened up to this point, this is the final film. And it just, I'm not holding out any real hope that this is going to be an amazing experience. Yeah, I I feel the same way. And I'm going to count to three and we're going to both say... The character we least liked in in the latest X Men movies. One, two, three. Mystique. You, you beat me to that. <laughs> Mystique. <laughs> Just absolutely, she's not the character Jennifer, from the comic. She's a terrible character. You can tell from the way this new trailer is. It's like Jennifer Lawrence going, "Yeah, I went off this set. Yeah, this we're point. done. I'm out of here." Good. <laughs> I. After the last movie, she looked like she was wanting to go. During X Men Apocalypse, it's like I gotta leave this. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, okay. yeah. <laughs> and and like I said, this is basically uh, Schuler Donner's uh, last shot at the boss's whiskey. She knows it. She will never be involved with the X Men again. And thank the maker for that. So now we move on to uh, uh, another studio, Warner Brothers, and their CW, which is relaunching um, or rebooting uh, the Lost Boys. And uh, which is a classic movie. 
Well, we well, talked about it last week. Yeah, we talked about it, but this week we've got a new uh, addition, which is uh, the casting of the Frog Sisters. What? Yeah. Now, uh, we looked at it just before the episode and uh, before we came on the air. And so I can't remember the young actress's name, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of satisfied with who they cast. Yeah, I, 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 I don't mind this particular twist. Yeah, the, the, the gender flipping there, I don't have a problem with, to yeah. be honest with you, because it's not the main character, mm -hmm. uh, and it's they're, they're secondary characters who are important to the story, yeah. but they're not the primary characters. And so gender flipping them is actually uh, uh, quite welcome. Uh, at first I was abrasive about it, because I'm a diehard fan of the original film, but then I thought, you know what, no, I really don't have a problem with it. Well, they, they've already made changes. We were able to establish Yeah, because he's established tonight another big change from this series from the film, which is... Uh, adding two additional characters that weren't part of the original film and having the character of Laddie actually being the son of one of these new characters that's coming into play. So Yeah, the, and her character is a direct in direct competition with David yes. as the leader of the pack. Yes. And uh, we have not heard yet... As far as um, who's been cast as the young brother yet, yeah, and we don't know who's been cast as the lead vampire that was the big yes, the we, big bad. We don't even know if he's in it. We've yeah. not heard anything about it, and we still don't know who's grandpa. And for me, that's a selling point. If that if we don't have somebody that's good playing grandpa, mm -hmm. I'm going to be out. Who would you like to see cast as that? Well, he's he's dead now, isn't he? Yeah. 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 Oh my goodness, who who would be a good actor that's like somewhere in his like near 70s? I, well, my personal friend Dale Dye would be awesome. You know, he okay. was um, he was in uh, the uh, all of the Oliver Stone movies. Mm -hmm. He played Barnes in Mission Impossible. Good he one. was um, uh, the general in Falling Skies. Yes. And uh, and he has the best line in the movie Platoon, which I won't repeat because it's <laughs> It's an F bomb, <laughs> but uh, Dale Dye is a friend of mine, and he's an amazingly good actor, and he would be really good as Grandpa. Hmm. He's in that right age. Um, we can't have Clint Eastwood, even though he would actually be really cool as a curmudgeonly old I, Grandpa. I have a radical casting. Uh oh, let's hear it. John Lithgow. I like that. I do. Because he's in this, he's in the right age group. Huh? He's what? He's about 65, yeah, 70? Yeah. Yeah. And so. he can be eccentric. I mean, all those years. Oh, the third, third rock from the sun. Um, yeah, I, I can see that. I'd like. This guy would be a good one. We should start a thing, <laughs> rally and push for him. I kind of like that one. Um, but but again, as we established last week, though, uh, the 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 major part of all this is they made changes. For the reason why his daughter moves back with her sons. And instead of it being divorce, it's where her husband, their dad, has passed away. So they're, they're giving it a whole dramatic overtones. Rather than just treating it as kind of whimsy and fun and, and, a, and a new lease on life, it's like, ugh. So this is how we're going to go into the show. So with that kind of change to the show, then it just alters... Really, the, the uh, 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 focus and tone of the show. So you yeah, it, it, like you were saying, it just it sort of automatically starts off on a down note. Yes, and and because we've talked about this before, that the the problem I have with so many shows that we see today, uh, like Star Trek Discovery, instead of being a cross dialogue or dialogue that goes up, it's always going down. Yes, and it's what. People are getting bummed out. It's like we, you know, you're you're really one. It's boring. Uh, excess drama is boring. Um, people think that oh, we need to add this fake drama to no, just get through the drama really quick and get onto the story. People want that story. They want it to unravel. They want to unravel what's going on. That's what's so awesome about Game of Thrones. Yeah, that writing. They are, wow, I'm looking forward to their Star Wars movie. That's all I got to say. Those guys understand how to write Benning dialogue. Benning Hoffman Weiss. Those guys are phenomenal. Amazing. So, we've got that. That's the Frog Sisters on the new CW, uh, the Lost Boys series. Uh, until they cast Grandpa, 
I'm not all in. Lithgow. So, Lithgow, yeah, amen. Uh, next one, of course, we're going to talk about uh, the rumor going on about Constantine right now that uh, uh, Brian may be back playing him, that apparently he's being talked to. But you have a concern, which I understand, which is Berlinte. Yeah. Matt Ryan is... Uh, Matt think, Ryan, not, not Brian. <laughs> Matt Ryan is, is perfect playing John Constantine. And he's so good. I mean, you know, even Guillermo del Toro was considering... You know, casting him when his show Constantine was still on NBC, uh, De Toro was thinking about casting him in a big screen version of Justice League Dark. Well, he's the first actor in the DC verse that, ha outside of Adam West, mm -hmm. that has transitioned from live action to animation. Yeah, and it, and it's phenomenal to see this because, and and some idiot at uh, Joe, I love Joe Blow, but they are dumb people that. Their, their presumption is that it's because of that that fans like him. No, it's because of the fans liking him that Warner Brothers did that. Yeah. Not the other way around. And, and it's like, uh, come on, Joe Blow, you guys are better than that. You, get your facts straight. Uh, Ryan is this guy that the fans loved from the moment he started on that show. And we were floored when they canceled that show. Could not believe because it had such a big fan response. Yeah, well, it's NBC and it's the cost, and I get it, but that doesn't mean I like it. My again, my biggest. Well, it didn't belong on NBC, and no. everybody knew that. It's like, yeah. why did they do that? Yeah, Constantine realistically should have been either a Showtime, HBO, or Stars series. Flat R-rated across the board because it's horror. Yes, it's not comedy; it is horror. There's comical moments because the character Constantine's hilarious. Yes. Uh, he's a smarmy, snarky, uh, sarcastic tool. Yeah. And um, and that's what makes him so, he's a curmudgeonly lovable character. And, and a lot like me. Putting Placing him into the Berlanti universe was, again, from the very announcement, I didn't feel good about it. Having seen his, having seen what they did with the character and what they've done with Matt Ryan, I feel I feel that I was right. You know, his appearance on Arrow was just not good. And being on Legends of Tomorrow for this past season, even worse. Now, agreed, I will say this. It kept the character going. Yes. And that's always good. It keeps it keeps him working. Yes. I want to see that guy making money. Yes. Uh, and he's good in that character. But it keeps him alive, and that is the one positive thing. But... And I know Keith agrees with me. The only way that this character should be done is on the DCU. It needs to be part of that lineup with Titans and Doom Patrol that is R-rated, allows for the horror elements to exist within it, and that naughty language. Now, <laughs> given what you've described, then I think the perfect people to bring this to life would be Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. Given what they've done with Preacher... You know, this is right up their alley. This is the kind of property that I think they can handle if they're wanting to be a little serious and, and, and to do something slightly different from a lot of the things that they've done up to this point. Uh, again, there are other DC shows outside of the ones that are on CW produced by Berlanti that a lot of you out there need to be watching because... You know, DC won't be really tempted to try anything different with different producers and writers unless they start having, you know, unless people start supporting those shows. So, you know, get out there, watch Krypton, you know, watch really uh, iZombie, which I still think a lot of people are probably going, is that still on? Yeah, that's still on. It's still a good show. Uh, uh, and I'm going to do my part because... Um I was not impressed with the first season of Krypton. Yeah. Uh, I was not impressed with the, the, the plot changes mm -hmm. and, and stuff. But, because Lobo's coming on the show, I'm absolutely all in season two. I'm going to be watching. But there's another sci-fi show I just want to mention, not DC related. I watched last night. It's, it's called Alien News Desk. And it's got um, uh, the... Uh, Will Forte? Will Forte. Yeah, yeah. That was weird and funny, and I'm like, what in the world? I just caught it by, by chance, and I'm like, what? Alien News Desk? Yeah. 
So I just wanted to bring that up. I, I saw that that was pretty good. Um, moving on, we've got uh, a new casting uh, addition to Watchmen. Plus, we now know who at least one of the, the actors is playing, who he's playing. And you called it. Yeah. You called it that Jeremy Irons was going to be Osmantius. Mm -hmm. and, and that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, the new Watchmen series is taking place in the aftermath of what occurred in the comic book. It is not a direct sequel, reboot, or any of that. It's just the continuation of the story in their view of what would happen. And uh, I, basically... I think it takes place today. I think, I think what it is... Yeah, because the original was 1987 uh, during the Reagan administration, 86, 87. Yeah, 86, 86, 87. So now it's 2019. So having Jeremy Irons play Ozzy Mandis works. And, and he's in hiding. Yes, because yeah, everybody knows. I mean, if you've seen, if you've read the comic and you've seen the movie, you know what Ozymandias secret is. And so now the rest of the world knows too. And so of course we see that the new Rorschach has a pullover mask yeah. with holes in the eyes. And that of course is because the original mask was destroyed by oh. um, Dr. Manhattan. Yeah. And, uh, or is it Mr. Ma Manhattan? I always forget. Dr. Yeah. Manhattan. It's Dr. Manhattan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he completely vaporized him. So his hat... Costume, Spoiler mask, alert. all was destroyed. And, and this goes, led to my criticism of the movie. One of the few criticisms I have of Zack Snyder's film, which is they left out the explanation about Rorschach's yeah. mask, yeah. which was so important because it was part of his backstory of finding this material, making the mask out of this magical, mysterious, but radioactive material mm -hmm. that altered his brain. Yeah. And made him into the violent thug he became. Yeah. Because before that, he was more like a, a Batman, Sandman kind of character on his game and was good at being a partner, but then he became isolated and, and very antisocial, and it's because the mask messed with him. They left it out of the movie. I wish they had kept that in. But this series looks interesting. I like that the cops all took on the whole mask persona that they, they cover from their nose down. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's interesting, you know, that this is what they came up is uh, protecting the identity of, of uh, not just superheroes, but um, of the cops that yeah. are now, you know, watching the Watchmen. Yep. And next one, of course, is IGN's Alien Isolation uh, digital series was just launched today. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd seen the preview yesterday. I was very excited. Watched the first episode. And what they did is, is I consider this brilliant, is they took the uh, cutscenes from the video game and edited it in such a way that it's its own series. Yeah. It's, it's a standalone story, and it's really, really good. We get to meet uh, Ellen Ripley's daughter and, uh, and see what she went through in the video game, but as an ongoing TV series. Each episode is about 10 minutes long. It's really good. Wow. Um, he has not watched it yet, but he, I get it. I, Showed him a little peek at it. Now it's available on YouTube, right? It's available on YouTube for free. So go watch it. And la uh, let's see. Jay and Silent Bob started filming. Yeah, uh, according to an Instagram photo from uh, Kevin Smith, it looks like production has started on Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. So, again, a quick little thing about the plot. It's basically... Uh, Jay and Silent Bob find out that Hollywood has decided to reboot the Blunt Man and Chronic movie that was made years ago. And so Jay and Silent Bob have to again figure out a way of to avenge themselves on Hollywood. <laughs> Getting some of that. Because fat. Kevin Smith is not a sellout. Getting some of that fat Hollywood <laughs> cash, you know. Uh, look, I wonder if they'll bring back Mark Hamill as Cockblocker. That's a good question. Or is it Cockknocker? Is it Cockknocker or Cockblocker? Cock knocker? Yeah. Yeah, we go. Yeah. Um, I, I'm looking, look, I'm just looking forward to the movie. I, I really enjoy well, those characters. We have a special movies. place in our heart for, for uh, Kevin Smith because uh, I poke fun at him for, for his selling out a little bit, but the fact is, is that guy's a nerd. He's a geek like us. He completely, uh, we identify with him. I mean, he, how did he make his first movie? Sold his comic book collection. To pay to make his first movie, Clerks. I mean, you gotta love a guy willing to do that. Yeah, but look at it, what happened. He did all of that, and in the end, you know, he he has fame. He got the girl, and he owns his own comic book shop. 
Jay and Silent Bob Secret Stash. Secret Stash. And I, it's one of those places I want to, it's my mecca. I want to go there. You should all go. I'm hoping one day to do a book signing here for one of my comics. <laughs> so, and of course, last on the list is uh, uh, we, of course, got the news today that King Kong vs. Godzilla wrapped principal photography. So, I it surprised you... me because I wasn't aware it was shooting right now because yeah. we're getting ready to get Godzilla King of the Monsters. Yeah. And I figured that sometime towards the middle of the year they'll start shooting Kong and they've already started, they're done. Yeah. They finished shooting the principal photography. And it's all about effects and yeah. all the post-production stuff. Isaac Gonzalez, who's one of the stars of the film, posted on Instagram that they had completed filming. So now it's just pretty much, as you said, it's just waiting out post-production. Probably a few pickups, but for the most part, just post-production. Or any possible reshoots, if yeah. you know. Because you know, studios, uh, Warner Brothers in particular, but they're not Warner, are they? They're um, Universal? Yeah. Yeah, it's Universal. Universal doesn't have as bad a reputation, even though they really messed up with the mummy. Uh, yeah. But that's Alex Kurtzman, which is another story. By the way, I found out that because a lot of people don't know that I work for Josh Becker. And I finished that movie poster we gave you guys a sneak peek of last week. There it is. Okay, that's our that's the poster. And uh, we will be um, uh, uh, publishing that, and I'll have it available at the convention. I'll sign some copies for everybody. But I wanted to point out that Alex Kurtzman worked with Josh when Josh was directing Hercules and Xena. Yeah. Because Alex Kurtzman was one of the writers on... The show yep and so he got to know Alex and he, he just considered him kind of this geeky kid so I got to see uh, Alex Kurtzman from a whole different perspective listening to Josh talk about it I'm like oh that's cool and eh, maybe I don't hate him so much now <laughs> <laughs> I know that's ridiculous it, it, it was him and his friend reporter Orsi so the two of them together and now look what happened after all these years I mean, yeah uh, and like Josh said, Josh had a great comment. He says, look, I saw the 2009 Star Trek movie, and I enjoyed it all the way up until they blew up Vulcan. And then I was out. He was done. You blew up Vulcan. Big mistake. And uh, so with that, I guess we'll wrap up. Was there anything else we need to discuss? I think that's it. All right. Well, this is Pop Culture Minefield with uh, Keith and Gary, and we're out of here. See you guys next week. Out. What, what was it you wanted to talk about? Oh, uh, uh, the uh, court ruling about uh, Bones, the television. Oh series. shit! Yeah, you were talking about that earlier. Yeah. Turns out, looks like Fox is going to have to pay out some serious money to the stars of the show, uh, as well as the showrunner and even uh, Kathy Rex, who was the author. Yeah, the the real Bones. Yeah, yeah. It turns out they they've been getting away with just telling everybody we didn't make that much money. Oh, studies been pulling that shit since the thirties. Uh, I mean, they are worse than the mob. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like that is so ridiculous. Uh, it's like um, it's they've done this to so many directors, filmmakers, actors that that got that deal for the back end and then go well the movie only made this much because there was another lawsuit about five years ago six years ago i can't remember who that was mm -hmm. it was a major thing and, and the studio ended up getting caught yeah and they had to pay out these studios have been doing this and this includes warner brothers it includes columbia pictures it includes mgm paramount universal all of them are guilty of it at one time or another especially with tv yeah well this is Definitely, I think, going to change how television works for a lot of deals like this. Uh, if you are a successful show, especially if you've been on for quite a while, there's definitely money coming in or else the show wouldn't Yeah, this, this cooking the books or, or presenting two separate books, 
This is the, the, the money book that they show everybody else, but this is the real one that they keep hidden in a safe bunker someplace. Is it, That's got to end. It has to end. Um, I'm, we, I'm not saying that. If we got to get oversight, uh, the, the government to oversight Hollywood to run its business honestly, I'm all for that. And I'm, I'm a libertarian saying this. <laughs> I just, it, it, this is just one of those amazing little off facts that's going to have a, an incredible effect really on television for years to come. So That's interesting. Man. Well, okay. That's our post-credits. So I uh, guess I'll see you later. Bye.